I think when I was here in, in June, yeah, I think it was June, uh, I was here for two Sundays. And the first Sunday, what, we didn't have any uh, voice or something. I remember oh, that. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's been a struggle. <laughs>
Next weekend is the only weekend that we are collecting the dish soap because they need that a week ahead of time. It's going into 175 care packages that they are packing to have the distribution with the food boxes that they hand out. So if you want to contribute dish soap, it has to be here next weekend, either via the drive through drop off collection or in church on Sunday. The canned vegetables can be brought next weekend or the following weekend on the 11th, because on the 11th, those will be going over to be packed into the boxes for the December distribution, which is the 15th, I believe. And uh, if you don't know what a 28 outside bottle of dish soap looks like, I have two of them out in the narthex in the dish detergent box closest to the coat rack. And that is the size they're asking for 28 ounce bottles of dish soap and the vegetables, 15 ounce cans, it can be any variety of vegetables you would like to contribute. And always, we greatly appreciate your support of our projects and please contribute to what you want to contribute to. Do not feel you have to contribute. Thank you. Oh, I forgot one thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too much to remember. Um, next weekend also is the last weekend that we're collecting for the Animal Rescue League. So if you want to bring pet supplies or contribute monetary donations, you can see us at the drive through drop off Saturday or bring it to church on Sunday. And the times for the drive through drop off collections are 9 to 11 a.m. Thank you. Good to be with you in worship today. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, come let us go to the house of the Lord, to the house of the Lord of Jacob, that he may teach us the ways that we may be his For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against the nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Opening hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Oh, 
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We light this candle as a sign of our great waiting and hope for the coming Christ.
The first lesson for the day is taken from Jeremiah, chapter 33, beginning with 15 verse. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise that makes the house of Israel into the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, we will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our Righteousness. Second meaning is taken from the first Thessalonians, beginning at the ninth verse. How can we thank God enough for you and return to all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and the Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy to the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy. The gospel lesson is taken from Luke chapter 21, being at the 25th verse. There will be signs of the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the glory and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, we will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is here. Even so, when you see these things happen, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, for your hearts will be weighed down with things, dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxiety of your life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Here ends today's reading. Good to be with you all today. I know I have a purple one today. That's because I don't have a blue story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, purple is about royalty as well. And so uh, I like the blue. I really do. Uh, that's, a, that's a recent thing in the church, actually. It's probably about 30 years ago that churches started moving uh, away from purple to blue for the Advent season and uh, keeping purple for the uh, Lenten season of the church year. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God. My words today are based on Paul's letter to the Thessalonian church. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for God. The famous inventor Thomas Edison <clears throat> born in the uh, mid 1800s, 1847, I believe, and he died in 1931 or 32. And uh, he lived in East Orange, New Jersey. And of course, you remember Thomas Edison is probably most famous for his invention of the incandescent light bulb. Among other things, he worked on phonograph 
all kinds of other kinds of inventions. But at his home in East Orange, there was a gate, and it was a heavy iron gate. And when people came to visit Edison, they push open the gate. But it was an iron gate, it was heavy, and it took a lot of effort, energy, to move the gate open and close. So one day, one of Edison's friends said to him, Tom, why is it so difficult and requires so much energy to open your gate? Edison said, come with me. And he took his friend up to the roof of his home. And there, there was a big tank and there were pulleys and wheels. And he said, what you don't know, Edison said to his friend, is that when you open the gate, you are actually pumping a gallon of water into my storage tank. <laughs> so anyone visiting us was doing a little work for them. Sometimes we think that God should do something for us. <coughs> Take away this COVID. It's been around for almost two years now. Do something. Take away the crime and the violence infesting our cities and our nation. Take away this cancer. Take away this heart disease. Take away this diabetes. All of which alter our ways of living. Do something about climate change. There was a theologian in the 13th century whose name was Meister Eichel. And he once wrote, and I quote, some people want to see God with their eyes as they see a cow, and to love God as they love their cow. They love their cow for the milk and the cheese, and the prophet it made them. This is how it is with people who love God for the sake of outward wealth and inward comfort. They do not rightly love God for their own advantage. The Apostle Paul, in today's lessons, focus Focus on the relationship between God and God's followers. And he smashes the image of a practical, obliging deity waiting by the phone to respond to our calls. Paul writes to the Thessalonian church that his understanding of God's relationship with a faithful church is like that of a nurse tenderly caring for her children. A relationship that comes from abounding love for one another. A relationship that is marked by thanksgiving for a dedication to stand firm in the Lord. Paul encouraged and urged the Thessalonian church to grow in relationship with God. A church that is filled with members who cannot help but reflect God's love by abounding in love with one another, with others in their community, and with God. So you see, the emphasis is not about what God does for us, it's what we should be doing in increasing love to one another. Paul writes to the Thessalonian church, how can we thank God? For you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God. That church in Thessalonica, Greece, 2,000 years ago, faced persecution and suffering as it was threatened by its city's pagan 
officials, condemned by the Jewish synagogue, and even divided with its own ranks. And yet, in spite of all this potential for conflict and the worst of indignation, the church persevered and flourished, demonstrating commitment, compassion, and charity. Let's fast forward to 2021. In the turmoil and conflict and division in our nation, I don't know what that's all about these days. All the division, conflict in our communities, in our families, in our world. I think that the church is called and its mission today, which was always part of its mission, but it's even emphasized for today, is that we are called to incarnate God. We are called to, embark, to incarnate, take on God, if you will, through love. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called into a loving relationship within the church. A love that extends past these sanctuary walls and into our broader community and into the world and ultimately with God. We are called into the bonds of true friendship with one another and with the stranger who lives. We are called into tender care. We are called to selfless desire. We are called from social concern for God's world. We are called to love those who are greatly unlike ourselves. We are called to accept and love those who fall short in their Christian walk, but who do not know what it is to walk in relationship with God. We are called to a bound in love. There's an old song that goes way back. Love makes the world go round. And it shows an idealistic understanding of love for sure. Uh, it says love is divine, not prejudice. Love is life changing. However, history shows us that this love is difficult to find. It certainly wasn't possible to find in the day that Jesus and Paul lived on this earth. When the Roman Empire was usurping and enslaving more and more communities. And it hasn't gotten better since then. The sacking and murder of the Crusades, the slavery and slaughter that accompanied the European settlement of North America, two world wars, and a whole host of other conflicts, big and small, Korea, Vietnam. Somalia, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan. While it's love, while love makes the world go round, rings more falsely in our ears today. It's definitely true, though. That love makes life worthwhile. Only love makes earth the seamless and its greed, the injustices that we see daily, those persecutions that are seen throughout the world. It's only love that helps us to find some joy and hope in everything even in the dark moments of life. Love abounds. And love that abounds propels us into action. Because the joy and the hope that stimulates in our hearts and sciences moves us to respond to what life gives us and moves us to carry love into every relationship we if we live a life of abounding love, if we live a life that only reflects love. When love abounds, love is expressed in actions, 
not just steel. That's why when we say, why doesn't God do something? That's not the point. The point is, why don't we do something? And if we abound in love, then we will walk. We will walk that talk. Abounding love is the force behind those meals prepared for friends and family. Abounding love is behind those construction paper Christmas tree ornaments that children make and bring home from school or Sunday school. Abounding love is behind those miles spent on the road traveling to Thanksgiving or Christmas to be with family, to be together. Abounding love is behind all those Christmas cookies made for energetic children, behind all those hours spent volunteering for the church's mission projects. Abounding love is behind all those mission opportunities here at Freedom's Church that you heard about today. So we shouldn't just invite God into our life through the gate so God can pump water into our life. We're not full of God's abounding love if we're more concerned with what God can do for us than we are with what God's love can do for others through us. I think that's the mission of the church today at its great meeting. And then it's a time to reflect on the abounding love that we should show to the world around us as we wait with excitement, with anticipation, and with hope for the coming of the Lord. May it be so. I invite you to proclaim our faith as the words are printed in your morning bowl. To say what you believe. In love you came to a stable and to be one with us. In love you came to a stable and to be one with us. In love you came to a stable and to be one with us. In love you came to a stable and to be one with us. To be one with us. To be one with us. In love you came to a stable and to be one with us. 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 In love you came to a stable and to be one with us. To be one with us. You came to the house so that we need never to be deserted alone. Come on. Sing our little hymn. Come, our long expected.
to unite our hearts in prayer. God, our hope, we rejoice that you became flesh and made your dwelling among us, even as we long for your return. As we wait, our hearts overflow with gratitude for the beauty of creation, for your work in the world, for signs of peace and reconciliation, for our community and its leader, for your work accomplished through your church, and especially for those things deep in our hearts and minds. For all these reasons and so much more, we give you praise. As we celebrate the first coming of your son as a helpless child, we also yearn for his return, for the day in which there will be no more sorrow, pain, or death. The day we remember in prayer, the nations of the world, those in authority, the needs of the community, the church universal, its mission, and those who minister, the local congregations and their ministry, especially remember the ministry of freedoms to this community, nation, <coughs> and world. We pray and remember those with particular needs. Lord, we pray for those that are sick, those that are ill with COVID and other diseases, for those who grieve, for those who are far from home during these holiday seasons. All these things, O oh Lord, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our source of hope. Amen. Okay. I take this opportunity to remind you that your tithes and offerings are being received at the table in the North X. And please give generously so that the mission and work of Freedom's United Church of Christ may be sustained and strengthened. And its ministries may be strengthened, not just here in Holy, but throughout the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference and the National United Church of Christ throughout this nation and world. Thank you for your generous gifts. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have done and are doing great things for us, and holy is your name. Bless all we offer you, ourselves, our time, and our possessions that through us your grace and favor may be made known to all the world. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord, hallowed Lord, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the reign. Amen. Our closing hymn, The King of Glory Comes, 132. <laughs> into the world committed to move in the ways of justice and peace, go humbled in God's presence, go ready to fall in love with God's abundant kindness. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.